There's only one level three in San Antonio's Methodist Hospital. Uh, you know, but they have more resources. Could we do it? Yes, we could, but I wouldn't go down the road. Should we do it? We, 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 want, we want to be the best hospital that we can be. Uh, but <laughs> level three is, it, I wouldn't go there. Good question. Good, Good question, question, but okay. Okay. I like that goal. Uh, that Anything concludes else? my uh, CEO report. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to do you consider and take action regarding any of the following issues from the finance committee meeting, uh, the April uh, summary and financial analysis. Great. Um, Jamie and I will tag team this as we, as we always do. Uh, but if you had a chance to look <coughs> at your packet, you know that April was just an outstanding month. Uh, we just uh, got done meeting with, thank you all, appreciate thank you. you. Uh, we just got done meeting with uh, the Finance Committee and discussing the financial results. Um, long story short, uh, we generated more revenue in April than we ever have, $7.5 million in, in gross revenue. Uh, that resulted in a bottom, bottom line uh, of $359,000 for the month of April and an operating gain of 112,000 uh, for the month of, of April. Uh, that brings us to a robust year-to-date target on the operating side of $834,000 uh, so far year-to-date fiscal year 2015, and a uh, bottom bottom line of $2.2 million uh, for, for the same period. Uh, pretty excited about uh, continued improvement in the balance sheet. Uh, we can see net assets uh, up again 18.6 million dollars, and, um, and that's representative of our total assets being 32 million dollars um, at the period of April, April 30th, 2015. A couple notes that you see there. Uh, number one, uh, gross revenues per day, uh, very healthy target. We're, we're certainly looking to see are we north of 200 thousand dollars a day in terms of our gross revenues, and we uh, exceeded that uh, during the month of, of April. Um, clinic system visits were uh, strong, uh, not quite as strong as they had been in previous months, but as we studied that, we saw that there were 17 uh, vacation days uh, during the month of April, physician vacation days, and obviously that, uh, that impacts um, the total, total count. Uh, and again, we are looking at a, a cash infusion that will come in May that uh, will uh, further strengthen the balance sheet. All in all, just generically, April uh, financial results are, are, are very strong. Uh, what drives that, uh, of course, is our, <coughs> is our patient volume. Uh, we will go through a number of slides that we will review in the Finance Committee. Um, number one is our daily visit average in our emergency department. Uh, this is a very interesting thing that's developed lately. Uh, our EO is clearly getting busier. Um, in, in 2013, October and November, uh, we were generating about 31 ER visits a day. Um, March and April of 2015, uh, 38, 39 uh, ER visits a day. The average is somewhat deceiving uh, because literally on uh, Monday of this week, we had 61 uh, ER visits during that particular day. So um, you can see that um, uh, number one, we're becoming more busy on an average basis, but we're also seeing higher spikes in some of our daily activity in, in our emergency department. So, has been and, and earlier you were talking about what type of illnesses it's just been a gamut of things you can't say it's been more of this and more of that but it has just been a very 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 department over there where are we have we seen an increase in EMS patients yeah increase in EMS patients you brought to us yeah brought to us the only reason I ask is I've seen more ambulances besides just the one here in Georgia coming out of the driveway. Oh, yes, yes. So those, that number? Yeah, we are seeing more from other areas, yes. Okay. Not a lot, but some. Do you know average wait time? You know those kind of metrics? Do we track that? Yes, we do. We do, and, and we have a couple that I would share. But go ahead, Sue. We have our our goal for hitting the door to triage is is ten minutes, and we make we meet that goal on a number basis. We also have a goal of length of stay to be under two hours, and we almost always consistently meet that goal as well. 
two hours, two hours, hours on four minutes, Pardon? you know, something along those lines. And if you're not covered. And they have a goal as well from when the patient hits the door to when the physician evaluates them, that goal is 30 minutes. The national benchmark is 30 minutes, and we are under that. We'll have a slide later that's that 25 minutes. So ER is definitely getting, uh, getting I brought a, a neighbor of ours in Monday, Tuesday maybe, earlier this week, 93-year-old gentleman, and, and the care was excellent. And the people, the nurses were, were excellent. And, and, you know, everybody had a smile on. I mean, the people that are in there are sick, and, and, and it's, but when you, when you see that the people that are taking care of you have got a smile on your face and have a pleasant personality, it was, it was really impressive. It was, it was good. No, I, we we can market all we want, and that's that's a good idea. But that the customer care is paramount. That's that's got to be top notch all the time, because in in a small community like we have, the word travels fast. And so, excellent job. That's a great job. I think that's the reason we've seen a lot of these other clinics because the care is quality care. So. I think people are beginning to realize that we've got something real special here. I agree. That's good. I agree. I, I would venture to say if you live next to a hospital in South San Antonio, you'd be down here seen and back home faster than you could get into that emergency room. Right. So yes. If you just drove down here instead of going across the street. Right. We need more help. Yeah. Well, that's not the right one. Um, next slide here is uh, admissions and observations. Um, just, just a measure of our inpatient care. What's interesting about this, a uh, couple of things. Number one, yesterday was uh, May 20th, and we had 22 patients in the, in the hospital in May 20th. That's somewhat unusual. But looking back here at April, um, 78 admissions, 55 uh, overnight observations, good numbers. But look back at where we were in April 2014. Um, you know, a total of 116 uh, inpatients during that time, uh, 50 observations and 66 um, admissions. So um, what's fascinating about this in my mind is that industry trend is for a reduction in inpatient care. I mean, that is clearly uh, the, the trend is uh, to have a reduction in industry care, but um, you know, patients continue to choose us uh, when they need hospitalization. Here's where our real action and activity is. Uh, it's uh, in our surgery uh, department. Uh, surgery has grown very, very rapidly over the last um, uh, period of time. Uh, Dr. Hassan, our GI uh, specialist, uh, does a number of cases um, on, on a daily basis. Um, and certainly in our record uh, level at 250 uh, procedures for the month, uh, he was very busy. Uh, but we also know that um, uh, Dr. Faulkner did 26 uh, procedures uh, from an ENT standpoint. Uh, Dr. Krause did a number of cases for orthopedics. And Dr. Hamburg was very busy from the general surgery side. So not, our, not only are we seeing a high volume of GI procedures, we're also seeing an increase in routine surgeries that, that are done here as well. So pretty pretty exciting one-two punch going on in our surgery department. Jamie? I think if we look back at October, Last year we were at 110 total procedures. Now we're at 255, and 90 of those were surgery other than GI scopes, so actual surgical procedures. So we're seeing very, very good, solid growth in the surgery. Clinic system, uh, again, a pretty standard graph. Uh, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it necessarily. A good month for the clinics, around 2,400. Uh, Wilson County residents uh, receive care within the clinic system uh, for patient encounters. Um, I've just been generically talking about this over the last uh, couple of weeks, particularly at employee open forums and particularly at our physician meeting. But let's just say we round this number up just a little bit. From 2,400 uh, clinic encounters a month within our clinic system, let's just make it 2,500. Well, if you multiply that times 12 months of a year, that is 30,000 opportunities for Wilson County residents to receive care from the County War Medical Center clinic system. Um, you know, you, you rewind a couple of years ago, that didn't exist. All those patients would be going, all those cl uh, clinic encounters would be going somewhere else and not be associated with our, with our system. You know, the math is pretty routine. 
number of visits times 12 times 12, but so when you extrapolate it, it's a big number, a great opportunity for us to, to deliver good care and help people have a good impression of our organization. 30,000 um, roughly uh, clinic visits over the course of a year. Um, all of uh, the graphs we just showed in terms of patient volume uh, flow into um, our gross revenues. I mentioned to you earlier that uh, the month of April was uh, a large month for us, 7.5 uh, million in, in gross revenues. Uh, we use gross revenues kind of as an indication of, of activity. So a new level of, of high there. Uh, we had previously set a record uh, in, in the previous month of, of March. As we're looking to May, May seems to be a strong month as well. Might not be exactly to that level, but certainly uh, a strong month for us. What we're observing is um, you look back over the course of the last uh, part of the fiscal year, October 2014 to, to now, uh, we've had five months over $7 million in, in gross revenues. Two months, February and November, uh, were softer for us. One obviously is a 28-day month. The other has the Thanksgiving holiday and has historically not been a, a good month for us, but uh, really, really pleased uh, with where our revenues are. I would like to draw your attention uh, back just a little bit. Uh, if you look further back, um, we had a similar trend going in um, uh, 2014, uh, December, January, February, um, all the way to, to May were, were really strong months, but uh, you can see a little dip there in June and July. Uh, a little, little, summer, little summertime um, lag that happens at all hospitals. Um, you know, I, I think it would be May of us to, to not expect a little bit of a summertime hit in the uh, upcoming months, uh, but hopefully we can uh, use our marketing team and maybe our clinic system to develop some uh, alternate revenue opportunities to, to maybe not take that hit as, as much as we have in the past. So uh, just uh, want to point that out because we're having some great times. We know that summer typically will slow down for a hospital of our size. Um, Finance Committee has, has seen this graph several times, one of my favorites, uh, but it looks at our gross revenues uh, by quarter, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter, and then uh, rewinds that by year, 2011, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And um, again, you can see that um, uh, when you restructure how the previous graph looks, um, you know, uh, certainly 2015 first quarter and second quarter have been uh, significantly larger seen in the past. We're a new organization, guys. I mean, that's really what the, what the bottom line is here. Um, generating $21 million of, organ, uh, of activity, $21 million of patient care. Uh, we're 50% larger um, than where we were just a, just a few years ago. Jim, do you want to comment on that? No. <laughs> no. Enough said. Um, another similar graph. We've, we've shown this quite a bit in the past. I updated it for our employee open forums. Uh, but um, it's our red expense line, operating expenses, against our blue uh, operating revenue line. Uh, way back in the distant past, uh, the, the red line was north of the blue line. In um, uh, August, uh, September, October of 2012, we got those two lines to cross. And then, uh, of course, uh, over the last couple of, of years, our blue uh, operating revenue line has been north of our red. Uh, uh, expense trend line. Uh, we've uh, been uh, excited to watch that uh, gap spread, which is a positive thing, while we've been going through this growth mode. Uh, Jim, why don't you comment a little bit about the balance sheet? Uh, our balance sheet has, has, has shown good, good health and good improvement over the past five years, four, five and a half years. Uh, we've gone from $6.3 million net assets to 18.6, so net assets have almost tripled in that period of time, uh, which is very positive. Our bond rating has improved from the minus to a BP. We've had uh, upgrades in each of the last three years, and the or two years, and and also the board. You know, this demonstrates the board has, has made an effort to uh, reduce the burden on the taxpayers of the county, reducing the tax rate 10 percent, then 5 percent, and 5 percent. Uh, it cost a little bit of tax revenue to the hospital, but it's not, not a huge impact in it. And it passes something back to the taxpayer. You know, the most ex exciting thing here is to look at that, that green uh, section. 
uh, in 2010, we had uh, six million in net assets <coughs> between our total assets and our total liabilities. Uh, today, uh, we have 18 million in net assets, which is the difference again between our total assets, uh, 32 million, and our uh, liabilities at 13 million dollars. So, the health of the organization, as I explained to the employees the other day, is is financially strong. One of the <coughs> major things. Uh, board that is causing this is a very positive shift in our payer mix. Uh, you're going to see in the next two slides uh, that uh, we are being chosen more frequently by uh, patients who carry Blue Cross and uh, commercial insurance. That's favorable for us uh, because those payers typically pay better than uh, Medicare, Medicaid, or self-pay uh, um, individuals. Uh, Jamie, you want to comment about uh, these two slides? Yeah, kind of these stacks by our best payers is Blue Cross, so it's on top, and then the other commercial payers are second best, and then Medicare, Medicaid, and self-pay. And as you as you look back and coming forward, we're improving the, the Blue Cross and commercial uh, as compared to the Medicare, which is, is positive, so they pay better than Medicare. And at the very bottom, we swapped a percent of self-pay for Medicaid. Self-pay is the worst payer. Medicaid's not great, but it's better than trying to get money from people who can't afford to pay us. This is uh, the inpatient side of, of our business. And um, Sue just shared with us a very interesting comment. Uh, right now, today, we have 19 uh, patients uh, upstairs. And of those 19, 11 are commercially insured or Blue Cross uh, Blue Shield insured. So people who have a choice are choosing to uh, to come to us. And I think that's, uh, that's obviously very, very exciting time. Yeah, and this represents 25% of our revenues. And the next slide is 75% of our revenues. In 2014, compared to 15, did, did the Medicare and Medicaid volume grow a lot, or did it stay pretty stable? From a from a cash standpoint, pretty stable on on that area. The growth has been in the commercial. So, so the, the, the growth is in the commercial areas. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid is, is pretty stable. In other words, there's not a big growth in that area. Yeah, there's a little growth there, but it's not as not, not significant, significant as the so other. The growth is in the is in the commercial pay and the Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'd like one other point. Um, to pay for Obamacare, um, Medicare payments to us have been reduced. Uh, other states have expanded Medicare, uh, Medicaid to make up for the difference, but in Texas we have not done that. So we've gotten the penalty, uh, lower Medicare patients, uh, reimbursement for the same number of patients, and, and the same amount of reimbursement for Medicaid. So our financial performance has overcome the penalty of Obamacare without the benefit. As other states have, uh, and I'm not lobbying either way, just stating facts of that, that we have our Medicare reimbursement has been reduced for the same same number of patients because of that, but uh, we haven't gotten the benefit of Medicaid expansion in Texas. Um, <coughs> couldn't agree with Carl and Bill. Uh, the uh, outpatient care mix here is uh, just another uh, review. The outpatient side is obviously the, the lion's share of where our uh, revenues come from, and uh, you can see uh, today uh, Blue Cross and commercial uh, payers represent 40% of, of our outpatient care. 75% uh, of our business, and we've we reduced the self-pay portion 2%, and Medicaid's increased one, and we trade 1% up somewhere else, Medicare, Blue Cross, commercial. So in, in the 75% of our business, we've really improved our care. And we still will interpret that as those who can choose to come, choose where they go or coming here more than they were. And that our specialists, uh, specialists in you know, uh, Dr. Faulkner, Dr. Hassan, you know, are helping support the positive parents. Last couple of slides here are, are informational. Uh, days and accounts receivable. Uh, we perform at uh, better than benchmark uh, averages in terms of our uh, collections, uh, in terms of days uh, in accounts receivable. Uh, typically having uh, around 50 days in, in AR outstanding is uh, you know, very good, um, and uh, we're performing at um, you know, shy of 46 days um, in our overall accounts receivable. Yeah. Great, great, good job. great collections department. Um, last slide here was just a, a restatement of the, of the net assets on, on the balance sheet uh, from 2010 to 2010. Okay. Um, some, some ratios that we monitor and 
total margin is the uh, bottom line, uh, including tax revenue and, and interest expenses. We're at 13.6 percent, and our operating margin is 4.7. You can see those are considerable improvements over the prior year. Uh, Carl will share some information later that shows where we compared to other hospitals, and it still looks good. Uh, current ratio of 4 4.1 is very good. Anything over two or two and a half is very good. Uh, days cash on hand, we have nearly 80 days. Uh, we're paying our bills in 25 days, and uh, cash stable is 45.7. So, uh, I believe all of those are, are pretty strong indicators. Help me indicate. Uh, that concludes our financial report. Uh, any questions or comments about the financial report? Well, the bonding, what effect does that have on the system to go to a D or a WD? I don't know what it is. Is there a triple D? Or, um, uh, I, I don't know the next level up. Uh, I do there's a, a, a triple D. Um, but what we have done is because our bond rating has improved to date, uh, we just uh, refinanced all of our outstanding bonds here um, about four months ago. And um, that refinancing will save us $1 million over the remainder uh, of the bond period. Uh, so we have, uh, what, $12 million uh, of debt outstanding. How about this man? We'll be saving a million dollars over that period. Yeah, we reduced our interest rate by about half. Maybe they can buy New Jersey. Any other comments or questions? If not, we have a motion to uh, accept the uh, April summary of the so. now. We have uh, got a motion by Amy Clark, second by Tom Miller to accept. All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Uh, next thing on the agenda is the capital budget review and purchase the uh, ISL upgrade agreement. And I'm going to ask uh, Tom Miller what was the recommendation from the finance committee. Uh, the board, uh, the finance committee recommended that uh, we approve the upgrade uh, of the ISL system. We have to, I understand we have to upgrade it because it's currently on uh, uh, Windows XP. Cool. Which is no longer being uh, supported. Yeah. As a result, we need to move to the, the most updated uh, Windows operating system so that the system is continuing to work. We support that. Move. Brian, what was the cost uh, to do these upgrades? $91,000. $91,000. Okay, the recommendation of the Finance Committee was to approve it. Do we hear a motion? Uh, any questions, first of all? Any questions or comments? Or any additional information you might not require. Okay. Make a motion that we approve the purchase or the expenditure to upgrade the OmniCell in the amount of ninety one thousand dollars. Okay. Uh so I hear a second? I'll second. All right. Um, it's been moved and seconded that we uh, approve the purchase of the uh, the OmniCell upgrade agreement. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Next thing on the uh, agenda is the endeavor report. Carl? Well, we certainly have uh, some positive information on how the financials are doing for the hospital. Um, so I thought it would be beneficial to see how we compare with, with our peers. Um, the, the new board members, uh, Endeavor Healthcare has uh, hospitals in Oklahoma and Texas, and we're able to access their data. Uh, six of the hospitals are similar to Lee Conley. Uh, there are uh, prospective payment hospitals located near urban centers, just like uh, Conley. And there's really no uh, statewide data uh, to compare income statements uh, with, with other like hospitals. So we were able to pull those six hospitals' information. Uh, each hospital is unique in the payer mix. Uh, you saw our payer mix just now, how they charge for their care and how they format their income statement. So we, we have compiled those to make it as apples to apples as possible. Uh, and this is a broad comparison. It's just an indicator of how we're doing when compared to our peers, uh, not compared to budget, as you saw, or uh, compared to last year. So as you look uh, at the sheet I just handed out and, and the screen behind me, 
uh, on the right hand column is our target percentage. This is based on uh, benchmarks that we do have, uh, benchmarks that Brian and Curtis and I are aware of um, in, in, in healthcare for hospitals of our size. Um, and then the second column then is the information from the six comparative hospitals. Of course, the third column is last year, fiscal year 2014, that ended in September. And then uh, the first column is the first six months of this fiscal year. So it does not include the, the April numbers, but it's the first six months of this fiscal year. As you look at gross revenue, as Brian uh, explained, it's an indicator of activity. Um, and you'd like to see more outpatient because we, we make, we are more profitable the more outpatient volume that we do. And so a 75-25 split outpatient inpatient is what we'd like to see in college right on the money. It was a little bit better last year. As you look at net revenue as a percentage of gross revenue, which is the next section now, a reminder again, net revenue is what we expect to be paid. So gross revenue is what we charge. Net revenue is after contractual adjustments for the insurance companies and bad debt and so forth. So net revenue is what we expect to be paid. It's, it's actually our revenue that we are anticipating. And we are collecting a higher percentage than our peers and a higher percentage than our target at 34.6%. And that, that's kudos to Jamie and his team in the business office our upfront collections, all those things are coming together. Our increased payer mix, we have a better payer mix than some of the peer group, uh, so we get paid for the same patients a little bit better. And so that's a, a, a very important statistic for us, and we watch that very closely, and we're doing very well there. Total collection percentage is when we include the other uh, government revenue that we get in, such as the UPL revenue, uh, uncompensated care. These are programs that we use to pull down more Medicaid dollars from the federal government. If you throw that in, our collection percentage is still uh, right, right on the money where we'd like it to be. Uh, a very good uh, statistic for us is bad debt and charity uh, at 7.4% so far this year. The target is 8, and we're certainly better than our comparative group. So that indicates that we're doing a good job of two things. One, we're collecting the money that we're owed, and two, we're getting those that are uh, charity, which is those who can't afford to pay for their care, uh, making sure they qualify for that. Bad debt, which is those who uh, can afford to pay for their care but choose not to, uh, that we're collecting on that percentage good. And we're getting people eligible for Medicaid, uh, and getting them on their plans and making sure they're, whatever we do for them is covered by their insurance companies. So that's an outstanding indicator for us, something we're very proud of, Jamie and his team should be proud of. Jumping down to uh, expenses as a percent of net revenue. Uh, salaries as a percent of net revenue were at 32%. Good indicator for us that we have a lot of volume. Our staff is productive, they're working hard, and we're, we're below the benchmark there. Uh, benefits and taxes as a percentage of net revenue, same thing. Uh, we focus very hard on uh, our most expensive benefit, which is health insurance. And so we've gone to self funded, and that's caused us to have great savings, which impacts us on this percentage very, very significantly. Uh, and just, uh, the overall management of our benefits is outstanding. Same for benefits as a percentage of salaries, the tribe we want it to be in some great shape. The one uh, red mark, if you will, on our, on our list here uh, is the professional and physician teams. Uh, the other comparative hospitals do employ physicians like we do. Uh, we were talking in finance committee, though. Uh, our mix is heavy on specialists right now, and so we're, you know, the hospitals that we're familiar with have a larger percentage of primary care doctors, uh, family medicine, uh, internal medicine. That they're paid less than the specialists. The primary care doctors make less money, and so that would cause this as a percentage to increase uh, compared to our peers. We're also uh, looking at strategies. Brian's working diligently to reduce this percentage. The affiliation agreement that you guys uh, approved two months ago is part of that, where we can get benefits for our physicians and offload some of their costs um, onto that PL uh, type program. And these, these practices are still growing. These new practices are still growing, so there's still some room there. Also. That's another great point. Uh, you know, as uh, you start a new physician, the primary care doctor takes typically uh, 18 months to get fully full, and you know, where their salary is a lower percentage of their total revenue. Uh, and all our physicians, uh, except for two, were within 18 months of starting. So they're still maturing. The practice is still growing. So their salaries are high compared to their, the revenue that they generate. So uh, you, oh. you should expect to see that come down as a percentage. Let me show you this again. Let me show you this again. And again, it's, it's on our radar screen. We're, we're working on it. Brian's working. Yes, sir. Right. 
but we're, we're, we're bringing these services to the people. We're bringing critical services to the people. We're managing it. We're, we're able to still profit in the, in the process of doing so. To me, this is some of the best money we spend. Yeah, you know, we've got a higher level of specialty uh, compared to some of these other hospitals, and that's right here in our community. So you bet. The six hospitals, uh, don't worry, we don't have a GI doctor full time. We have Dr. Hassan. He's, he's very highly paid, very uh, generous, a lot of business, does a great job. But that's an example of how ours would skew our numbers just slightly. Yeah, it's like one specialist to generate a lot of uh, cost, but he'll also generate a large amount of charges. <coughs> Absolutely. And that's kind of the point Larry was making. They haven't gotten to their full potential in that regard. We're paying a full salary. <laughs> so as a percentage, their salary is still high. Good point. Um, two more points and then I'll be done. Supplies as a percentage of uh, net revenue of supply expense. Uh, again, uh, the team here has, they're very diligent about their slot supplies, making sure we pay the best price uh, for the products and we don't overuse or waste the product. The Amish sale is an example of that. They control their drug costs. Uh, as an example, those are charged properly. Uh, so they've done a good job. We brought in a uh, consultant named Tim Belford to help us make sure we're maximizing our GPU you know, a year ago. And that's paying off. Uh, but these guys are doing great. Well, kudos again to Bob. He's the, uh, the negotiation Nazi. He does a good job uh, working with vendors to make sure his area is, as does everybody, but uh, Bob especially, uh, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the table. Jamie and Seth as well. <coughs> uh, lastly, uh, we're bottom line tech folks, and as Ronnie mentioned, even with that uh, maturation of our physician costs, uh, holding us back a little bit, our operating margin is within the, the target percentage, and it's our big significant for a better peer uh, And then the total margin, which includes our tax revenue uh, that we just discussed, uh, is blown out of the water. So not only compared to budget again, and, and just having a good, good fiscal year compared to our peers, one last point, uh, if you think about the key indicators when you look at the hospital, uh, team member satisfaction, we just got the 150 great places to work, it's a national award. Patient satisfaction, what the team has done recently uh, to do is, is just incredible in the 91st percentile. Financially, we compare very well with anybody. So we're not the best hospital in Texas yet, and we're not satisfied. Uh, this team will never be satisfied. Uh, but certainly, all indicators are positive. Not resting on the goal, but we will continue to work in these key areas and making sure. And I forgot quality, of course. Uh, you'll see a report in the executive session on that, but also the trauma designation, uh, the stroke center, those are all indicators that our quality is as good as the time. We had state surveys a couple of months ago and had no efficiencies. So I've never heard that. So things are going well. Um, this is just another indicator of broadening the area that we want to share. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, uh, um, let, me, let me share that with you uh, back, in, back in March. Um, actually, um, back in March, uh, I'm sure I got it in here. Uh, look, there it is. <laughs> back in March, um, Becker's Hospital Review, uh, David, is a, is a uh, national uh, magazine uh, amongst uh, the healthcare industry. Um, it, it's been pretty well known, pretty well recognized uh, throughout the industry. And every year they put out a list of 150 great places to work throughout the entire nation in healthcare. And on that list, there's places like Johns Hopkins, Duke University, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, you know, a lot of those huge, huge names that you would expect, as well as other small um, regional hospitals that, uh, you know, scattered throughout the nation. Well, um, this year, uh, 2015, we were recognized as one of the top 150 great places to work at Becker's uh, a Hospital Review, and it really is a testament to three things. Number one, our culture, you know, very positive with our team members, and, and just we had a great, great uh, group of people working with us. Number two, our doctors are um, very highly qualified and, and very confident in delivering good care. And then number three, we just, we just have momentum with a lot of things going on in our direction, and the editors at, at Becker's uh, recognized that when they compare us to uh, all the other peers. So we were recognized uh, on their list as 150 great places to go. 
kind of a big deal. It's pretty big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. And, and, and Brandy Board member didn't know about it, so we need to crow a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's a big deal. And that's so everybody I talk to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I think what's a big deal about that is that it's just not what, what you have, have expected of, of a hospital in Floresville. It's not what you expect of a hospital our size. And um, you know, really, we're, we're on that path to become one of the best hospitals in the state of Texas, and this is just one of those. You know, I've actually seen some of that. But it, didn't, it didn't click until he said it was a national award. Right. And so then, that's when it starts quick. It's a national award. Who else is involved? Where did it come from? That's what, that's what made it click. Well, I'll send you the link from Becker's uh, so you can see it. Not to um, accuse the bragging, but the Press Candy database that we're the 91st percentile. There's 2,800 hospitals. Couldn't get 95. 95. 95. 95. Excuse me. Was it the ER that was 91st? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, I think we're. Uh, but there's. Uh, okay, I'm not going to quote the number. Maybe y'all may know. How many are in the Press Candy database? 3,500 and some odd. In the total database, and then in the comparative group that we had, there's over 200, uh, I think, something like that. So, amongst the national and then the, the regional or um, hospitals our size, uh, we're in the 91st and 95th percentile for ER and the innovation. So, it, it took a long time to get there, and these guys have worked hard to get us there. Um, that's also a national comparative. Right, that's a national comparative. My point <laughs> is uh, long it's, uh, 95th uh, percentile in the, na in the nation against um, all, all hospitals of all sizes. For January, February, and March. It wasn't long ago we were in the 12th. Yeah, that's correct. That's the answer. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's uh, one word to say to that, uh, and that is, or two words, it's nursing leadership and the SUTAG. If there's no word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, when we say the best hospital in the city, we mean it. I mean, it, it's something that I think is achievable. It's not just a dream is something that we can achieve. And so we all work hard and, and, and keep to the task. We'll get there, we'll get there. We, we're a long ways down the trail now. So, uh, you know, a little more work and we'll get there. Uh, okay. Okay. Do, we, do we vote to approve Carl's report? No, it's for information. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then at this time, we will go into executive session. It is uh, 737.